so our uh, requirement is to prove the universal coefficient theorem for homology so before we do so we have to describe what are the chain complexes so just like in chain complexes with coefficients in integers we have chain complexes with coefficients in a group g and uh, it is still does look like finite formal sums of this form yeah so th there is a summation so instead of integers we write gi where gi is element of the group g which is under consideration and sigma i is again uh, a singular chain which is precisely as it was before now what are the elements of c and x comma g look like so we know that uh, earlier we used to write c and x comma z as direct sum of z's now we write it as direct sum of g where each g comes from the n simplex so you're writing it cn for n simplex so if it was c1 so you could have say 10 g's for 10 one chains yeah in c1 if you write 10 direct sum of g's that means there are 10 one chains so from the definition of tensor product uh, it follows that cn x comma g is nothing but cn x comma z tensor with g now this follows from the fact that z tensor with a group g gives you g now this is a, a you can see this on uh, dummet and foot in particular for any ring r and uh, r module n r tensor with n is just n so this is the result which we are using yeah and this uh, tensor product uh, spreads over the direct sum yeah it goes in uh, as you would expect it to so uh, this tensor product is the key idea yeah so now i am drawing the chain complex again you have the standard boundary maps delta n then delta n minus 1 and delta n minus 2 and so on so now we tensor each of these chain complexes so we had homology group h and c with coefficients and integers in the top now we are tensoring it with g to get c and x comma g so the chain i am drawing now will have coefficients in a group g rather than in integers and the map we write as delta n tensor with identity so it is just an indicator uh, identity the tensor sign in the map is just a notation yeah so it is you should think of it as delta n from the top and this one is just identity from g to g so i've just copied now delta n minus one from the top chain and one is just carrying g to g so this is the way to think about it yeah so we yeah that is pretty much it and we get the corresponding homology group here with coefficients in g so the question is how are these two related And the answer is universal coefficient theorem for homology. And this we have already mentioned before. So yeah, again, I uh, will mark the key idea. So tensor product is what is the key idea? So let us start again with writing the chain complex. So this chain complex has coefficients and integers the standard chain complex which we have been talking about in uh, the entire course 
and we have the corresponding boundary maps delta n plus 1 delta n delta n minus 1 and so on so what is kernel of delta n kernel of delta n we have been writing as zn and what is uh, kernel of delta n minus 1 zn minus 1 and so zn minus 2 and so on what is image of delta n plus 1 so it is bn image of delta n is bn minus 1 so notice that cn is getting mapped to bn minus 1 here similarly image of delta n minus 1 is bn minus 2 again very important notice that cn minus 1 is now getting mapped to bn minus 2 yeah because delta n minus 1 acts on cn minus 1 and image of cn minus 1 is nothing but bn minus 2 so net, let us write this down so zn the kernel injects into cn and cn gets mapped to bn minus 1 because image of delta n is bn minus 1 similarly we have this map zn minus 1 injects into cn minus 1 and cn minus 1 gets mapped to bn minus 2 now we have the standards maps zn to zn minus 1 is delta n cn to cn minus 1 is delta n but notice from bn minus 1 to bn minus 2 you have to have delta n minus 1 yeah so notice the index is delta n minus 1 so i'm just going to draw some arrows to make it clear cn gets mapped to bn minus 1 cn minus 1 gets mapped to bn minus 2 and that is the information we are copying down here now notice that bn minus 1 is free so cn splits as such in this form so precisely because of two reasons one it is part of the exact sequence but exact sequence itself is not enough to ensure splitting now it splits because this bn minus 1 is free okay so now you just tensor it and this is the chain complex we would like to work in so this is what we get so we have already shown before that uh, the homology groups with coefficient in g come from the chain complex of the form cn tensor with g as so i have shown in the previous slide the chain complex so notice two things one this action of delta n is trivial when it takes zn to zn minus 1 this is precisely because zn is nothing but the kernel of delta n so obviously when delta n acts on its kernel it gives you zero so this map is trivial delta n minus 1 is also trivial because delta acting on the boundary map is zero delta of boundary is always zero so this is what we start the course with So continuing on from the previous slide, what we get is a chain complex. Yeah, so we will write down exactly what we wrote in the previous slide. So you get Z and tensor G from the kernel, which is Zn to the chain complex and then to the boundary map. So now we will write for Zn minus 1. Yeah, so this is the kernel of chain complex Cn minus 1. Yeah, tensor with G. And then this goes into Bn minus 2, tensor with G.
Now the map is always uh, delta n and identity. So this you can see here. This is this map is delta n, and I write tensor with identity. But basically, you can just consider it as delta n takes z n to z n minus one, and identity takes group G to group G. Similarly, everywhere else. Yeah, so uh, from z n minus 1 tensor g, it should be actually inclusion map, but I have written delta n tensor with identity. So you just, yeah, so there are small mistakes here, but you can ignore them. Yeah, so this, which what I'm writing is delta n tensor with identity should just be identity map. Yeah, it's just an inclusion map. So, yeah, so first notice that this map is trivial. Now this we have mentioned on the previous slide also because uh, Zn is a kernel of the map so when delta n acts on it, it is zero. Similarly this map is trivial as mentioned on the previous slide, boundary of boundary is zero. Now this is important to keep in mind because this trivial map would imply the homology groups. For example for Zn to Zn minus 1, Zn tensor g to Zn minus 1 tensor g will be just Zn tensor g. So we have this complete ladder of diagram and we uh, compress it into this uh, chain complex. So right now whatever written in uh, reddish color is nothing but a chain complex. So this complete ladder of diagram I am writing is at this. So we get a chain complex 0 to Z tensor G, C tensor G and B tensor with G. So obviously once you have a chain complex, you should immediately think of the long exact sequence of homology groups. So this is what the homology groups we get. So HN and then HNC tends to G, HNB tends to G and then to HN minus 1. Now important thing which we are going to use here is the trivial nature of the homology groups in Zn tensor G to Zn minus 1 tensor G. So uh, homology groups will not be non-trivial, but delta map is multiplication by zero. So the homology group will always be, everything lies in the kernel and the image is zero. So you always ha will have Hn of Z tensor G as Zn tensor G. Similarly, Hn of B tensor G would be Bn minus one tensor G. Yeah, this is precisely because of the triviality of the boundary map. Okay, so since I already mentioned the triviality of the boundary map, so let us uh, write this down. Yeah, so this uh, now we have HNC tensor G. So we have already denoted HNC tensor G as HNC comma G in the previous slide and we intend to follow it up later. So because of the triviality of the boundary maps, the homology groups are precisely the groups where delta N acts on them because delta N is nothing but multiplication by zero. So everything lies in the kernel and the image is always zero. So this is what we get. Now we use the trick for long exact sequence. So any long exact sequence you can break up into short exact sequences. So before we do that, let us write down how are we going to break it. So before we break it, we have to talk about what is this map. Yeah, this map delta which is a connecting boundary map. Here is nothing but it is an inclusion map. Yeah, so why it is an inclusion map? It is uh, it is basically the standard inclusion of Bn minus 1 into Zn, yeah, into Zn minus 1. Yeah, so any long exact sequence can be broken up like this co kernel of uh, In tensor with identity. then to the homology group 
and uh, we need to specify where i and tensor identity is which i will just do in a second so i'm going to write c tensor g i'm going to write c comma g here and this goes into kernel of so this is a way of breaking any long exact sequence so we, you just need to know where the maps are and you can then break it so i just need to mention where the map in is you can already see uh, in relation yeah here the map in is yeah it is induced by bn going into zn yeah natural uh, natural uh, injective map bn to cn now let me write down clearly where the uh, the standard uh, that the breaking up of a long exact sequence into short exact sequence is a standard technique so you want to break it up around hn so you have to first see the co kernel and then the kernel of the incoming and the outgoing map so yeah basically we want to break it around hnc tensor g so we talk about the incoming and the outgoing map um, coming into hn and outgoing out of hn so i'm just correcting my mistake which i said at the start uh, just having a delta n uh, replaced by the inclusion map zn is included into cn so now we want to prove the right exactness of the tensor product so given a sequence of abelian groups a goes into b which goes into c which goes into 0 that sequence is exact then so is the tensoring with the group g so let us write this lemma down which you can find on page 262 of hatcher So you have A going to B, B going to C, going to 0 and then we tensor it. So yeah, I could have put a 0 on the left hand side of A itself because I is an, is an inclusion map. But when you tensor it, what you get is just the right exactness. So first we will show that the composition of two successive maps in the latter sequence that is I tensor with identity and then compose it with J tensor with identity is zero. Now this follows from the simple map that J i is zero which J i is zero follows from the exactness of the sequence of abelian groups and this immediately implies the following is zero. Yeah. So for your for our purposes you always have to consider j tensor with identity map as a pair of maps j comma r j comma identity yeah with j carries a to b and identity car identity carries g to g the second part is that j is surjective which would imply j tensor identity is also surjective So the third thing is we want to check exactness at B tensor G. So here we want to check the exactness. So in order to check the exactness, we have to show that this map is in ISO. So B tensor G modulo the image of uh, this map I tensor with identity 
So this map under the action of J, now J itself is not ISO, but this map when you modulo image of I intersection identity, this map is an ISO. Now in order to construct, show that this map is an ISO, we have to construct a map phi which is inverse of J tensor identity so that you get an ID map. To make this more clear, let us do some motivation. So we want to show, now this is similar to showing that this map and the sequence of abelian groups, this map is in ISO under action of J. J itself is not ISO, but when you modulo out the image of I, you get an ISO. So to pr pr uh, prove that this is an ISO, we have to construct an inverse of J, say map K, so that when you compose J and K, you get an ID. Now that's why I've written ID under J. And similarly, I have written ID under J tensor uh, 1 in the previous map. So suppose we have to define this map KC. So suppose KC is equal to B, where you see B gets mapped to C, just I have written that there, where JB is equal to C. So basically, you, there's no other option. If K is an inverse, it just takes C to B where it came from. So we just want to show that K is well-defined. So well-defined means if two elements, say B and B prime, both get mapped to C. Yeah, so these two elements B and B prime both get mapped to C. Then obviously J of B minus B prime is zero. Yeah, and that is solves of a problem because then that means it anyway gets modulo out. So if two elements get mapped to C, then they just differ by the kernel of this map. And that kernel comes from the image of I because I is what you modulo out. Okay, so now we come to this part here. We have to construct the map phi so that phi composed with J tensor identity gives you an identity. So just like before, so CG comes from P tensor G. Yeah, you have to construct inverse precisely elements where it comes from. Yeah, where JB is C. So we can only talk about maps from B to C because G to G is just the identity map one. We have to show phi is well defined. So again, if JB is equal to JB prime is equal to C, that means JB minus B prime is zero. That is equal to image of A, exactly what I have written in the bottom right corner of the slide. So if phi is well defined, what would be these two elements? Yeah, these two elements which are going to get mapped to C comma G. So these two elements which get mapped. So this will be equal to B minus B prime tensor with G. Now you've already seen that B minus B prime is coming from some I of A as written in the bottom right hand corner of the slide. So this is tensor with G and this is nothing but what we wanted which is image of I tensor with identity. So this is clearly an inverse to the original map. Yeah, we have just made it by construction as a inverse map. So this if two elements get mapped to the same element then they just differ by the kernel of the map and therefore the map is well defined. So now let us uh, talk about the co-kernel term which we wrote exactly after the long exact sequence. We took a long exact sequence, we broke it down and we wrote something like co-kernel to homology group to kernel. Now that is essentially which encapsulates the universal coefficient theorem and we have to decode that part. So first we write down this short exact sequence for the homology group. Now this short exact sequence is also called the free resolution of the homology group HNC. Now we will talk about free resolution in a bit but this is it for now. So now you tensor it and when you tensor it you get something which is right exact. 
okay you get something which is right exact now this map is i n tensor with g now we want to talk about the co kernel so co kernel uh, we just copy down the definition of the co kernel image of i tensor with g and this is precisely equal to hn of c tensor with g so what is the universal coefficient theorem for homology now universal coefficient theorem for homology is nothing but still is the decoding of this sequence yeah the entire story is encapsulated in this short exact sequence which we said you derive from a general technique from a long exact sequence yeah you should i mean you should always know how to break any long, long exact sequence into short exact sequences of this form yeah this is a general trick this is nothing to do with homology or cohomology but any long exact sequence can be broken down like this as a co kernel and the kernel map now our only job is to interpret co kernel and kernel now co kernel we have already interpreted above so this is done now we want to talk about the kernel part this part we still have to understand so we have i n minus 1 here but if we understand i n then we also understand i n minus 1 that is if we write something in general terms as i n then i n minus 1 will also follow so let us make the sequence b n tensor with g to z n tensor with g so we just copy the sequence down yeah i made the arrow to show that which sequence i am copying down so i'm going to copy the sequence down which i said before was right exact we want to make this right exact sequence into an exact sequence and we will do the most obvious thing possible now the most obvious thing possible is to attach the kernel of the map here yes yeah, so if you do kernel of this map i and tensor with g so you will have uh, you can form the somehow this is not exactly a short exact sequence because there are four terms here rather than three but we have zero at the start and zero at the end and we will talk about this kernel now so this is what we have inserted so now we want to talk about free resolution of an abelian group h and uh, by the end of this slide we will be able to define what tor is so what is the free resolution of an abelian group h so the free resolution is nothing but an exact sequence of groups so we have this exact sequence of groups like this this exact sequence with will end in group h and this exact sequence we will call the free resolution of h if each of these groups f is a free group yeah so this is free resolution of the abelian group h so each of these f is a free group and we have these maps f0 f1 f2 so this is free this is free like all fi are free now we tensor this free resolution with group g and we have a chain complex and notice that the above was exact sequence so obviously the free resolution has trivial homology groups because it's an exact sequence image is equal to kernel but once you tensor it it is no longer the case that this the the tensor chain which we just write it down which we have just written down is exact so there is a possibility here that the image is contained in kernel there is no equality here so we can talk about the homology groups so once you tensor it 
the chain we get might not be exact anymore and therefore we can form homology groups. So let us write down these homology groups. So the kernel over image. A standard uh, definition of homology group. So now we have an important lemma. This you can find on page 263 of Hatcher. So for any two, two free resolutions, so you the group H could have many free resolutions instead of just one. So if you have two free, free resolutions, say F and F prime of this abelian group H, then we have these canonical isomorphisms. So basically saying that the free resolution does not matter when you compute the homology group after tensoring. So no matter what resolution you take, the homology groups you get would be the same. Now that is pretty powerful. And the proof we will skip here. So this is true. So if the resolution does not matter, what does resol the resolution does not matter. So the homology group now obviously does not depend upon the resolution, but it depends upon two things. It depends upon obviously the group H uh, whose resolution we want to define and the group G with which we tensor and it does not depend upon the free resolution. So let us again mark this group. This group H is right here and this group G is right here. And this is precisely this homology group we call the Tor. So again I am writing it does not depend upon the free resolution of the abelian group H. So this is what it depends upon. It does not depend upon free resolution but it depends upon the group H and G. And this is what we call the tor. So since free resolutions do not matter, the question arises which free resolution should we choose? So obviously the answer is the simplest one. So we want to choose the simplest free resolution. So what is the simplest free resolution? So the simplest free resolution is something of the form like this. Zero to F1 to F0 to the abelian group H whose free resolution we are trying to find. But how do we construct such a free resolution? Now obviously group H is an abelian group. It has some generators. Take these generators and put them in one to one correspondence with a free group or basically construct a free group F0 by taking bases with one to one correspondence with the generator. This you can always do. Here you can just construct a free group. If H has three generators, construct a 
free group F naught with three basis elements. If H has 10 generators, construct F naught with 10 basis elements. Now, to make this group exact, you just take the kernel of map F naught and take it as F1. Obviously, since F0 is a free group, kernel of F naught, which is essentially a part of F0, is a free group too. So we have the required resolution in free groups. Now this is very comfortable for us because now once you tensor it with G you will get 0 0 0 because anything 0 tensored with the group G is 0. So since F2, F3, F4, F5 are all zeros in this free resolution we will have this store n h comma g is 0 for n greater than 1. But we also know that if we take that above sequence and we tensor it with g, we get this following right exact sequence. So this is also helpful because since now this tensor sequence is exact, that means the homology group in this sequence will be 0 too. After all, this is an exact sequence. So what is the homology group of this sequence? It is precisely called tor of 0. So this is also 0. So the only non-trivial tor part left is this. Tor of 1 h comma g. And this we write as the tor because this is the only non-trivial part. So now we have the universal coefficient theorem for homology. So let us write this down. So if C is a chain complex of free abelian groups, then we have this split short exact sequence. So let us write this down. C is a chain complex of free abelian groups. Then we have a split short exact sequence. So basically a torsion I am taking from the previous slide. So this is what we get. Yeah, so the kernel term is taken as the torsion. As you know, the kernel term, yeah. So the kernel becomes the torsion here precisely because the groups behind F1 are all zero. So the when you take kernel corresponding to F1, that is precisely the homology group. So this was co-kernel, this we have already shown. And this is the kernel map. Yeah, so because we were taking the free resolution of Hn minus 1 here. Yeah, this is again, you just have to look at the long exact sequence, which gives this co-kernel and kernel term and then understand why we have Hn minus 1 there. That is a consequence of the long exact sequence. So that is it. So to prove splitting, we have to prove another, that there is another map from Hnc comma G to Hnc tensor G so that this composition is an identity. So how do we show that? you start with the short exact sequence so from this short exact sequence construct a projection map so yeah this is the projection map then you have the natural quotient map from Zn to homology groups So thus we have a map from Cn to Hn. So let us write down these maps Cn to Hn. So 
So similarly, we will have Cn minus 1 to Hn minus 1. We will have Cn plus 1 to Hn plus 1. These are all connected by map delta. So we have essentially constructed chain complexes. So the map delta between the homology groups is trivial because a homology group is Zn over Bn and Zn is nothing but kernel of delta n and when delta acts on it, it takes it to zero. So delta map is trivial in the homology part. This will be important uh, in a few seconds and it is non-trivial on, only in the chain complex part. So I will write down this observation. Okay, now we have a chain map from chain complex to homology groups. Tensor this with group G. This is what we get. So since this, these, uh, the chain maps are trivial between the homology groups, we get the following map. So now we have from the chain complex maps, we have the map between their homology groups. Yeah, so this is equal to just Hn tensor with G. Yeah, because Hn tensor with G is the nth term of the H tensor with G chain complex. So because the map delta is trivial here from Hn to Hn minus 1, the map delta n minus 1 is trivial. So the kernel is the entire thing and nothing gets mapped to the image. So and you know the nth term of H tensor G chain map is Hn tensor with G. Okay, so we have this map from the in the reverse direction as you wanted to build. And uh, yeah, this map is uh, natural in the sense that uh, it, uh, I would like to say this map gives a desired splitting since at the level of chains, uh, it is an identity on the cycles in C. Yeah, you can see it is an identity on the cycles on C just from the triangle, the commutative triangle I have drawn from Cn to Zn to Hn and uh, therefore this map from Hnc tensor G to Hnc comma G and back again gives you the ID and thus we have the splitting. So for the pair x comma a, we have the following split exact sequence. So yeah, this is a corollary on page 264 of Hatcher. Yeah, we have done nothing much, just replaced x with x comma a.